The first thing you need to do is you need to specify some settings in your parse server code. So let's go back into our parse server code. Now, if you scroll down, you can see a section called live query with some stuff that I've commented out. So just comment it back in. Now with live queries, you have to provide it a list of the class names which will have live queries set up on them. It won't work by default on all class names because it, really it's a very expensive operation. So you don't really want to specify loads of class names on this. You only want to specify a few class names on this. So I've just bootstrapped it with test object, place, team and player, all of the class names that we use in our application. But in our code right now, I'm only going to show you it working with test object. Okay, so that's one thing we need to do is to set up the configuration for our parse server. I've set that up. So now let's push our code to Heroku. So again, git add, git commit. So I've added live query settings and then git push Heroku master. So while that's running and pushing to our Heroku infrastructure, the next thing we need to do, so there's two things we need to do. The first one is set up our parse server settings. And the second thing is to use the correct client library. So live queries, excuse me, live queries only work with version 1.8.5 of the parse uh, JavaScript SDK. The one I've been using in all of the examples so far in the script tag has been the one from the parse CDN, which is titled parse-latest. So that's the one I've been using in all of our examples so far. But if you were to view this one, and let me zoom in. Okay, you can see at the top, oh, zoomed in quite a lot there, that this is actually version 1.6.14. So the live query functionality I'm about to show you won't work with this version of the parse JavaScript um, SDK. If you're not using the parse JavaScript SDK and you're using one of the other SDKs, just double check which version is required for live queries because it depends, okay? So specifically with the parse JavaScript SDK, the best way to get the 1.8.5 version is just to build it yourself. Okay, so how you do that is you go in just the same way as we were cloning the parse example code. You git clone and then the path to the parse JavaScript SDK and then that copies it into a folder called parse SDK JavaScript. I've already done that. And then when you're in this folder, you then do npm install to install all of the required packages. I've already done that. And once you've done all of that, this already got a script inside it called, oh, let me remember what the script's called. It's called build releases. So once you've cloned it, once you run npm install, you then run build releases. This then goes away and builds all the various versions of the JavaScript SDK. Okay. And once that's built, if we look in folder, you'll see a, a folder called dist. And in that folder, we have parse latest and parse latest min.js. So if I now open that using sublime perhaps you can see it's actually created the parse sdk version 1.8.5 and you can then host this wherever you want to host it using your own application okay so there's two things you need to do a you need to change your server configuration to switch on live querying live queries for the classes that you want to use live querying with. And the second thing is you need to make sure you're using version 1.8.5 at least of JavaScript SDK if, you, if you're using parse in the JavaScript environment. And the best way to do that is just to build from the parse uh, SDK yourself. Now what I've done for the purposes of this course is if we go back into our JS bin 
and we look at the HTML, so just JavaScript, you can see I've actually already created my own pars 1.8.5 min.js. I'm hosting it in something called uh, raw git, which is just a, a simple way to host some files that you've uh, perhaps got in a, in a GitHub repository somewhere. You can use this if you want in development, that's absolutely fine, but I wouldn't use this in production. I'd definitely try and host something yourself and, and, and find a place to, to load, to store your own pars library. Unfortunately, the, they officially don't support 1.8.5 in a production environment yet. By the time you come into this course, the pars latest version from the pars CDN might actually support 1.8.5. So just double check. If it isn't, then build it from source. Okay, so those are two things we need to get done. Let me double check that I have pushed everything. Yep, so everything is pushed to the server and we're using the 1.8.5 version of the client library. So now we're ready to actually start creating some live queries.